uh, in the United States uh, in 1938, the federal government, this is also Roosevelt administration, set up the Federal National Mortgage Administration, uh, which was a government agency that would uh, buy mortgages to support the mortgage market. Uh, the, on Wall Street, they couldn't, uh, they couldn't pronounce Federal National Mortgage, or is it Association? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have administration. Is it Association? It's Association, not Administration. Uh, the, uh, the, you know what they called it on Wall Street? They called it Fannie Mae. That was just an uh, irreverent shortened name for the uh, association. It was run by the government. Uh, and uh, however, it was in the year um, 1968, the U.S. government privatized Fannie Mae. Uh, and it became a private corporation. So what did Fannie Mae do? It would buy mortgages from banks. They were trying to encourage the mortgage market. So a bank would lend money to someone to buy a house, uh, and then they're done. They can't lend any more money unless they raise more deposit. Well, Fannie Mae would buy the mortgage from them, and get, they'd have money again to lend again. Uh, and so, they did this in 38 because we were still in the depression, and the housing, in the housing market was still depressed. They weren't building homes. There were lots of unemployed construction workers, and so Roosevelt was just thinking, how can we stimulate the economy? And this was their, one of their ideas. So Fannie Mae was the, uh, the mortgage finance giant that was created uh, in 1968. Uh, I can shut this off here. Uh, so, uh, in uh, uh, 1970, government created another Fannie Mae-like institution uh, called, Fr and it, its official name was uh, Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, uh, and uh, Wall Street had to invent a name for it, so uh, they called it Freddie Mac. Okay. They thought, well, we gave a girl's name to Fannie Mae. Let's give a boy's name. I guess that's a boy's name. Uh, now, both of these organizations call them, uh, they're, they're both private companies now, but created by the government. Uh, they, they, they both use these names officially now, so that's their name now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But Freddie Mac was initially different, because what the government asked Freddie Mac to do is buy mortgages and then repackage them as mortgage securities and sell them off with a guarantee, a Freddie Mac guarantee. Uh, and so once Freddie Mac started doing this, Fannie Mae said, well, can't we do that too? So they both do it. So what the go government had done is create two private corporations. You kind of wonder, well, uh, private corporations, wh why did the government even do that? Anyone can create. Remember, we have a corporate law. I can start my own Freddie Mac, okay? My own Fannie Mae. But the government <laughs> did create them, well, by privatizing Fannie Mae and by creating Freddie Mac. Uh, and they are both in the mortgage securitization business. So they would buy from mortgage originators, people who lend the money, they'd buy the mortgages. They, in other words, they'd take the IOU from someone, they'd repackage them into securities, and sell them off uh, to the public with a guarantee from Fannie or Freddie that the mortgage, uh, if, if there were a default, the mortgage would extra balance would be made up by Fannie or Freddie. Okay. Well, they might then they did then get other companies called mortgage insurers to insure at least part of the uh, balance. So it's complicated financial agreement. But what we had was private companies created by the U.S. government that created securities for investors that were guaranteed against defaults. And based on 
the, um, based on mortgages. Uh, so the, um, the government then also stated that these are private companies and the U.S. government does not stand behind them. People started to say, the government created these two corporations and now they're, they're securitizing and guaranteeing trillions of dollars of mortgages and is this going to come back and end up being paid for by the taxpayer? Uh, so the government stated clearly, these are now private corporations. Fannie Mae started out as part of the government, but no longer. Now it's a private corporation. And if Fannie Mae goes bankrupt, woe betide anyone who bought their securities, because their guarantee is not backed up by the federal government. So uh, people complained, though. They said, it, you're, you're saying that it's not backed up by the federal government, but do you really mean that? If Fannie or Freddie goes bankrupt, will the U.S. government just let them go under? Uh, well, the official statement was, yes, the government will let them go under. Guess what happened? <laughs> okay. uh, in 2008, the, mo the real estate market crashed and we had our first housing crisis that was similar to the Great Depression. And in that housing crisis, uh, both Fannie and Freddie went bankrupt. Okay? And now, what do we do? We're in the Bush administration, Republican. They don't particularly like bailouts, okay? Uh, so you'd think, of course, uh, George W. Bush would just, it's the law, right? The federal government's not going to bail them out. But then some people said, wait a minute. You know, all over the world, people are investing in these, <coughs> thinking that, well, Fannie Mae was created by the U.S. government. In particular, a lot of Chinese, those poor innocent Chinese, <laughs> were trusting the Americans, and they put many billions of dollars into Fannie Mae. Are you going to go and tell the Chinese, sorry, you know, we won't back it? Well, someone could say, sure, go tell them that. It's what we've been saying all along. But then the Chinese could come back and say, well, you've been saying that, but nobody believed you. Everyone knew that that wasn't right. And, 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 and you, the federal government didn't take all the right steps to make it really clear. For example, the Wall Street Journal used to list Fannie Mae bonds and Freddie Mac bonds in a section of the newspaper entitled Government Securities. <laughs> and, see, and that's the Wall Street Journal. That's not the government talking. But, you know, the U.S. government should have come in and told them, no, those are not government. So we poor, innocent Chinese investors, we, we read your paper and it said government securities. Uh, now, George Bush could have said, tough luck. You know, you guys, you should have read the fine print. But he didn't. All right. Why not? Because it jeopardizes too much. If the U.S. government lets these agencies that it created go bankrupt, and it lets all those people all over the world who invested in those securities, they're going to be mad, right? And, you know, we, just ha we have a reputation. The United States is able to raise so much money from all over the world because they think that it's safe here. And if we just let these fail, it's not going to look right. So the U.S. government took them both under conservatorship and is paying their debts. We have securities called collateralized mortgage obligations. Uh, th these are uh, mortgage securities that hold, they're securities that are sold off to investors and they, they, they hold mortgages. But the, uh, as is explained in Fabozzi, they will divide them into sep separate uh, tranches or separate um, uh, securities in terms of prepayment risk. Uh, that is, th there's a risk that the mortgages will be paid off early in times when it's adverse to the investor interest. So they would divide up the risks into different classes of securities. And some of them were rated AAA by the rating agencies because they thought there was almost no risk to those securities. Uh, and others were rated uh, different, differently. And these, were, these CMOs were, were uh, sold to investors all over the world. Uh, Another kind of security which the textbook talks about is a CDO, which is a collateralized debt obligation. And these are issued to investors. 
and they typically hold mortgage securities as their assets. Uh, many of them held subprime mortgages in recent years, mortgages that were uh, issued against subprime borrowers. Uh, and uh, uh, a lot of these securities that were rated very highly by the rating agencies, rated triple A, uh, ended up defaulting and losing money for their investors. And the investors were all over the world. The United States is a leader in mortgage finance. And it was issuing, companies in the United States uh, were issuing, not just Fannie and Freddie, but lots of companies were issuing mortgage securities that had triple A ratings, which meant that Moody's and Standard and Poor's and the other rating agencies were telling you basically there was no risk to them. And so people in Europe, in Asia, were investing in these, and they thought they were perfectly safe, and then they went under. Um, and part of it was bad faith dealings by some of the issuers. Some of the issuers themselves doubted that these mortgages were so safe. Uh, but what do I care? I, uh, this is what happened. Somebody originated, it's gotten to, be, uh, to a complicated set of steps. Uh, it, it, somebody originates the mortgage. Okay, that means I talk to the homeowner, I have the homeowner fill out the papers. Then after they've originated the mortgage, they sell it to an investor, okay, like Fannie or Freddie or some private mortgage securitizer. Um, and the private mortgage securitizer finds a mortgage servicer, it may be the originator, who will then service the mortgage. And what does it mean to service the mortgage? It means to call you on the phone if you missed your payment, for example. Or if you have questions about the mortgage, there should be someone you call. So the mortgage servicer does that. So that's a separate entity. And then we have the CMO uh, organizer, the originator. And then we have the CDO originator. It's gotten to be a very complicated financial system. And then the whole thing collapsed. So there's been a, a lot of reform to try to uh, see what can we do to prevent this kind of collapse. Some people would say, let's end the whole thing. Let's go back to 1778. Let's not have mortgage securitizers. But that's not the steps that have been taken. Uh, and I think that uh, we are making progress. And I want to just conclude with just a little reference to one important change that was made in both Europe and the United States. So uh, the European Parliament uh, <coughs> passed a new directive that requires or uh, incentivizes mortgage originators to keep 5% uh, of the mortgage balance in their own portfolio. So that means if you originate a portfolio, you can sell off, if you originate mortgages, you can sell off 95% of the mortgages to investors, but you have to keep 5%. So this 5% limit was then later incorporated into the Dodd-Frank Act in the United States. So we again have the same requirement and this is supposed to reduce the moral hazard problem that created the crisis and retain the mortgage securitization uh, process.